السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی بلوڈ برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز ماشاء اللہ تبارک اللہ آئی فرسٹ ون ٹو کمنٹس ان دا نیم آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی بائی سینگ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا موسٹ گریشیس دا موسٹ مرسیفل وی اسٹارٹ ان ہز نیم اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی الحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ و علی آلہ و اصحابہ اجمعین I start in the name of Allah. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah bless them all and bless us all as well. So I'm so delighted to be a part of this beautiful Connecting the Pearls online conference entitled Lockdown. And this is the eighth Connecting the Pearls conference. Now, my brothers and sisters, life has changed drastically over the last few months in this year, 2020. And we need to realize one thing, and it's a very, very important thing. No matter what happens in our lives, our duties unto Allah remain the same. And the prohibitions shall remain the same. Allah Almighty has sent us on earth. He told us, I sent you onto this earth to test you. And in another place, he says, I sent you onto the earth or I created you in order that you worship me. So he wants to see, in good days, do you worship him? In bad days, do you worship him? Do you worship anyone besides him or just him alone? Very interesting. When I was much younger, I used to think to myself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to test us. What does that mean? And as I grew older, I started realizing that every day there is a new challenge in our lives. Every single day. Sometimes good things happen. Allah is just watching to see how we process these things. What we do. Do good things make us haughty, arrogant, make us forget Allah, turn away from Him? Or do they humble us? Do they bring us close to Allah? Do they help us change our lives? Do they make us uh, give up sin? You know, beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. It's a powerful dua that we should be making, supplication. It means, O oh Allah, I seek independence. In fact, we are saying, Allahumma kfini, O oh Allah, I seek sufficiency in that which is halal so that I don't do that which is haram. Make halal enough for me, sufficient for me, so that I never have to wander into haram territory. That's the first part of the dua. وَغْنِنِي بِفَضْلِكَ And I grant me sufficiency through your virtue so that I never depend on anyone besides you. Wow. So this is in all conditions. Sometimes bad things happen. So when bad things happen, Allah is just going to watch you to say, do you turn away from Allah? Do you do haram to, to help yourself? Or do you still stick to halal? You might lose your job. You might earn less, you might not have enough money, you might have health problems, you might have lost a loved one, you might have had issues in your families, you might have been through struggles and floods and you might be falsely accused of something, you might not be able to achieve something you really wanted to. Allah knew this already. It's part of your exam questions. It's part of the test paper that Allah chose for you. And guess what? It becomes more difficult or it becomes more challenging as time passes. But if you build your faith in Allah, then definitely Allah will make it easier for you, even though the test is bigger. You find that this will be the case. The closer I get to Allah, the easier the test is, even though it's a bigger test. So Allah says, I will test you with bigger tests, bigger tests as you get closer to me, but they will become easier and easier to handle and manage. Some people cannot take a prick of a thorn on their finger, whereas others, the whole hand is chopped off and they're still saying, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, mashallah, tabarakallah. The Prophet Sallallahu says, Oh Allah, if you are not displeased with me, I'm okay. If you are happy with me, I'm fine. Although he was being uh, treated very badly in Ta'if. May Allah protect us. So, 
That's why the hadith says, the prophets who are most loved by Allah have the greatest tests. But they know how to navigate through those tests. They have the greatest. Then, al-amthal fal amthal Those who are uh, the most exemplary or closest to them in example, and then the next and the next. So if you are pious, you're a good person, you turn to the deen, you came closer to Allah, expect Allah to test you with bigger tests. I mean, uh, the school does not test people who don't belong to the school. And when you come to the school regularly, you get bigger tests and greater challenges. Recently, someone joined the gym. MashaAllah, halal gym. And so... The trainer kept giving the people or the one who attended regularly more and more tests and they found they could do 100 push-ups, they, they increased it to 150, 200. When, when they started, they couldn't even do 10. But it's because they, they got used to it, they knew how to manage it. And I'm only giving you an example of push-ups, but it becomes more and more. Uh, in all different exercises, you become... With practice, you become better and better in anything. The same applies with your Iman. Allah gives you a small test. If you're going to come out of it with Alhamdulillah, He'll give you a bigger one. You come out of it with MashaAllah, He gives you a bigger one. You come out with it, uh, uh, from it with Tabarakallah and so on and bigger and bigger and it gets more. Every test that comes in your direction, ask yourself, did it draw me closer to Allah or did it take me further from, away from Allah? If it drew you closer to Allah, it was a gift of Allah and it was a test. But if it drifted you away from Allah, it might have been a punishment. Remember that. So it's easy to distinguish right now with this coronavirus and people losing their jobs. And like I said, so many things happening. We're on lockdown in many countries. Other countries, it opens, it closes. Restriction, no restriction and so on. Do you know what? If that drew you closer to Allah, it was a gift of Allah. It was a gift of Allah. No matter how difficult from a worldly perspective it was, it's a gift of Allah. But if that drifted you away from Allah, it may have been the punishment of Allah, a rejection from Allah. Therefore, learn to say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. All praise is due to Allah upon all conditions. On the day of judgment, there will be a caller calling out, Aina alladheena kanu yahmadoon Allah fi sarra'i wa darra. Where are those who used to Thank Allah and praise Him upon all conditions, ease and hardship. They still used to say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. You know, you notice how a true believer, when someone says, how are you? Even if they're going through hardship, they say, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's such a generic answer. But if you really mean it, it's full of faith, conviction and love of Allah. You're really going through turmoil. And someone says, how are you, my sister? You say, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Rabbil Al. May Allah bless you. May Allah grant you ease and goodness. My brothers and sisters, you know, we're talking about migration within oneself. So we all know that when we talk of the hijrah, we talk of a hijrah calendar, you know, we're sitting now, for example, uh, the month of Safar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a lot. And in this month, we know it belongs to the year 1442. When we say hijrah, it takes us back to the physical movement and migration from Mecca to Medina of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And we say so many years after hijrah. So that is very interesting because it means they left Mecca. Hajaru min Mecca ila al-Madina. They left from Mecca to Medina. It was called the hijrah. They left. What did they leave? They, le they left their loved ones, their belongings. They left so much more. They left their city and their town, their birthplace, and something they were connected to. They left it. Why? For the pleasure of Allah. In order to be able to serve their maker. In order to be able to practice Islam. That's why they left their place. In order to practice Islam without persecution, they left their place. But after that hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ made an announcement, La hijrah ba'd al-fatih. There is no hijrah after Fatih. After the victory of Mecca, nobody can make hijrah from Mecca to Medina and call it the hijrah. But there is another type of hijrah. What is it? Al-Muhajiru, Al-Muhajiru, meaning the one who has made hijrah. And this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned it, and it's an authentic hadith. He says, 
من هجر الخطايا والذنوب او من هجر السيئات a person who has migrated or done hijrah nowadays is the one who has quit sins or they have quit that which displeases Allah you know your bad deeds and your sins al khataya wal dhunub so my brothers and sisters remember something when you leave something for the sake of Allah it is equivalent to those who left Mecca for the sake of Allah and went to Medina uh, on a different scale but the equivalency meaning it's similar the similarity in the sense that you've left something for the sake of Allah in order to worship Allah correctly you left something so uh, someone who's drinking they quit the drinking in order that they can worship Allah correctly they have done a hijra internally a migration internally someone who has an addiction to pornography and they quit it what did they do they did a hijra they left something in order to be able to worship Allah correctly they left it in order to be able to worship Allah freely without that toxic mind so someone who's involved in adultery in fornication if they were to leave it for the sake of Allah they have done a hijra for the sake of Allah so to quit your sin also if a person has been leading his or her life in transgression you don't dress properly your relations are haram your food and drink is haram your income is haram your acts of worship are not being fulfilled correctly Allah will continue to send you reminders he has to awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkar wa ja'akum nadhir Allah will ask did we not give you enough life for those who wanted to take heed to take heed did we didn't we give you a long life like didn't we give you enough time for you to take heed you know and didn't the warner come to you so who are the, who is the warner some of the mufassirin speak of the gray hair and you know the difficult health and so on allah says we sent you warners to remind you hey you're going back to allah you better change your ways it's going to be a little bit too late very soon you know you better turn to allah soon soon do that hijra you know you need to come out of your jahiliya your ignorance don't be ignorant of allah because when you go back to him you're going to need it you're going to need the goodness so allah says we sent you messengers and messages these messages are made up of revelation made up of scholars who might talk to you made up of reminders that you might hear make up uh, made up of signs or some calamity that might come your way you know some people when life is too good for them everything is smooth they are pretty mashallah good looking alhamdulillah tabarakallah mashallah mashallah everyone is looking at you and they're all like ooh lovely subhanallah and you don't realize if you are away from allah that prettiness won't help you on the day of qiyama you can't come on the day of qiyama and say uh, i didn't do salah i didn't i wasn't truthful i used to drink i used to watch pornography i used to do this and that but you know what i'm so pretty you can't take me to jahannam i'm so pretty i was so so good looking you have to give me jannah ah uh-uh, ah it doesn't work that way la ilaha illallah you must be thinking how am i explaining this but i'm trying to explain it to you talking to you uh, to engage your mind to tell you listen no matter how handsome you are you cannot come on the day of judgment if you were wealthy in the dunya and say hey listen I I can't get this punishment I had a lot of money you know that money Allah says you left it there Allah says wa ma nara ma'akum shufa'a'akum alladhina za'amtum annahum feekum shuraka' we don't even see those intercessors whom you th- used to think or you used to say that from amongst you they will intercede on your behalf where are they allah says wala qad ji'tumuna furada kama khalaqnakum awwala marra here you are come to us alone just like the day we made you when we created you in the first place you were alone before you came into the wombs of your mothers you were alone with allah when you leave this world you will be alone again with allah you answer to allah so while you're in this short stint in the dunya do good deeds so you go back to allah with good deeds ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad oh you who believe be conscious of allah and each one of you 
Each one of you, look into what you have prepared to give for tomorrow, for tomorrow. You know, we're sitting in lockdown. This is the time. Get close to your family. Quit your sins. This is the time. Get close to Allah. Begin to fulfill your acts of worship. Your salah, take your time. Do you know what? It might be your last few days on earth. Who knows? This virus has proven to us that any one of us can get sick with anything at any time and be given a few days and we're gone. You cannot breathe and something happens to your lungs and you're out. What did you do to prepare for that day? I mean, in this world, I'm going to live. I'll have food. I've got a few family members. I'm never going to have everything I want. Not a single one of us will have everything we want. Not even one. Not even one. Because that's the nature of the earth. It's not paradise. It's earth. Earth is very, very imperfect. Allah created man and the earth. Imperfect. Imperfect means there will be deficiency. You need to use the toilet, don't you? That's an imperfection. Subhanallah. Yes, Allah created you in the best posture. No doubt. Indeed, we have created man in the best of postures. That doesn't mean he was perfect. Man is weak. He forgets. And a man will go to a place where he will be perfect and the place will be perfect. For now, we are imperfect and the place we are in is also imperfect. So we have sickness, we have cough, we have so many other things, we have things we don't know, we got to work, we got to earn, we will struggle, we won't get to marry who we want to marry, we won't get to work where we want to work, we won't get nationality of a country we'd like to be in, we will have restrictions, we will have so much and so on. People will dislike us, they will work against us, they will harm us. Alhamdulillah! This is the world. It's the nature of the world. Allah says there is jealousy, there is hatred, there is envy on earth. But come to the hereafter. Allah says we will remove from their chests, from their bosoms, whatever there was in it, in terms of jealousy and ill feeling, gone. Why? You're in paradise. You have a perfect body, you have a perfect soul, you have a perfect surroundings, you have everything you want and you wish. Four, but you need to prepare for that day. This world is too temporary. How many people have died just with this coronavirus? How many people die every year with the flu? Now I know. I didn't know before. But I know. Large numbers. Hundreds of thousands. Subhanallah. Die. Every year millions of people die. And some of them are young. My age, your age, and whoever else's age. How do I look at death? Oh, death is a gift. Because when I die, I will go to my prize. What's my prize? Ooh, I get what I want. Whatever I wanted, I will have. Allah says, in, in it there will be what you like. Whatever the soul desires. But to get there, you must prepare. I must prepare. By doing what? The migration. What migration? So run towards Allah. Indeed, I'm a clear warner to you. That's what Allah says in the Quran. Rush towards Allah. Indeed, I'm a clear warner to you. Make haste towards Allah. Indeed, I'm a clear warner to you. Run away towards Allah. Not away from Allah. Run towards Allah. Ha, why? I'm a warner. A day will come when you're going to regret. You, what are you going to regret? You didn't pray, you regret. You didn't dress properly, you regret. You didn't turn towards Allah, you regret. You committed immorality, you regret. You didn't work on your values and characters, you regret. You treated people badly, you regret. You swore people, you regret. You stole from people, you regret. You insulted people, you regret. You backbit about people, you regret. These are the regrets, great regrets. Allah says it in Surah Al-Furqan as well. And it's, it's, it's very shocking. On that day, the oppressor will want to eat his hands in regret. It's an Arabic statement of expressing the height of regret. Such and such a person ate his hands in regret, which means they really, they had to clear their organs in order, you know, to express their regret. Biting on your hands. Why? Because they say, oh Allah, I had bad company, man. I had this, I, Allah says, you know what, it's too late. It's too late. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَتَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا Those who used to worship people or deities or things besides Allah on that day, they will be told. 
that, you know what, look at the shirk you've done, you've failed. And they will tell each other. The, the ones who were following will tell those who they followed that, hey, are you going to help us and avail us here today? They'll say, no, we're all in this together. And Allah, they will tell Allah, they will hope that they could have gone back. They could have gone back to the earth and started it afresh so that they could disassociate from these people like the disassociation of that day. Allahu Akbar. And there are so many other verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When death comes to the wrongdoer, he will say, Oh Allah, send me back to the earth so that I can do good deeds. Now I've seen everything. I'm going to come back with good deeds. Allah says, too late. We sent you. What did we tell you on earth? We just told you do good deeds. Be disciplined. Islam is a religion of discipline. The original teachings of Christianity, Christianity and Judaism have discipline in them. Unfortunately, things have changed over time. There are more than 40 versions of the Bible, for example. But subhanAllah, if you were to look at the pristine teachings of Jesus, may peace be upon him, you will immediately find these disciplined rules and regulations governing how you dress, how you talk, how you have relations, your character, your conduct, how you worship your maker alone without associating partners, how you believe in the last day, you believe in resurrection and the day of judgment and answerability and how you seek the forgiveness of Allah alone directly. All those are the teachings of Jesus, may peace be upon him. But unfortunately, people don't like rules. They don't like regulations. Do what you want. Just do as you please, they will say. Mm -mm. That's not a believer. We will do what pleases Allah because we are going to return to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. I belong to Allah and unto Him we will all return. We belong to Allah and unto Him we will all return. What's the meaning of that? It goes to show me that you know what? Mm, I cannot do what I want. Who sent me here? I need to do what He wants. And what does He want? Good things, discipline. Is it too much to ask you to pray to the one who made you? Is it too much to ask you to dress properly? Is it too much to ask you to fulfill your sexual desires in a permissible way? Is it too much? Is it too much to say, notice how I said fulfill your, desi your sexual desires. I didn't say to stop yourselves. You fulfill it, but regularize it. Do it a proper way. Is it too much to give charity to the poor? Is it too much to be kind to others? I mean, well, is it too much, asking too much to say don't backbite? Is it asking too much to say don't deceive people? Is it asking too much to say fast in the month of Ramadan? Is it asking too much? No, wallahi it's not. Allah gave you 136,000 heartbeats a day for free. For free. Allah gave you 24 hours of the day. He says, give me 24 minutes in prayer. Is it too much? Yes, very little. 136,000 heartbeats. And Allah says, just don't worship anyone besides me. Subhanallah. Allah said, just follow the messenger. He has a path. Be clean, disciplined, no intoxicants, no gambling, no drugs, no pornography, no immorality, no evil, no adultery. Allah says, I give you 136,000 heartbeats. Every single day, I won't charge you a penny. I'll give you fresh air to breathe, free. Oxygen going in, coming out, free. All you got to do, be disciplined. Hijra, the migration. Leave and quit your sins for the sake of Allah. Change your life during the lockdown. People during lockdown are spending time on their phones, doing some dirty stuff sometimes, or wasting their time. Don't do that. You're a believer. Every moment is recorded for you or against you. Also, Seeking forgiveness of Allah is a very big thing. Many of us, we are human beings. We make mistakes. We are human. We are not angels. Angels don't make mistakes. We are not devils. We don't defy Allah. We do not defy Allah. So we are not devils. We are not shaitans. Right? We are mu'mineen, believers, but we are human. So what will happen? We will falter, but we will quickly turn to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. I was at a point of weakness and I did something wrong. Whether you kissed someone, whether you ended up committing adultery or fornication or intoxication or pornography, it's not the end of your life. 
Turn to Allah, seek forgiveness. He wipes it out immediately. Don't allow shaitan to come to you after that and make you doubt the forgiveness of Allah. If you sought the forgiveness of Allah after committing a sin, you are forgiven, wiped out, gone, released. Allah says it in the Quran. Illa man taba. Subhanallah. In fact, in another place, Allah says, Allah speaks about how beautiful the return to Allah is Tawbah. You know, those who seek forgiveness and turn, they change their lives. They are the ones, Allah says, yeah, Allah will accept their, their returning. And Allah will convert their bad deeds into good deeds because He loves the fact that they turned to Him. So, there is a difference between istighfar which means seeking forgiveness, and tawbah, which means returning to Allah. Okay, big difference. Istighfar, you sought the forgiveness, Allah forgave you. Then you must do tawbah, then you must change your way, change your life. Look at what Allah says in the Quran uh, about some of the prophets of Allah who, who were instructed to tell their people the following. وَأَنِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ And that you seek the forgiveness of Allah and then change your lives, turn to Allah. So you do two things. Seek the forgiveness of Allah and turn to Allah. Two things. They are different things. If you do both, you will be considered a muhajir. You will be considered a person who did hijrah for Allah, that internal migration. I sought the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, I did wrong, forgive me. I'm not going to do it again. I'm changing my life, changing my life. I've never dressed appropriately in my life. Now, I'm changing that. I'm going to dress appropriately. What did you do? Hijrah, mashallah. I don't read the Quran now, I'm going to read it. What are you doing? Hijrah. I never used to worship Allah. Now, I'm going to worship Him. What did you do? Hijrah. Imagine, these are the gifts of Allah. So this is the 8th Connecting the Pearls online conference. The first time it's online, but it's the 8th Connecting the Pearls conference entitled Lockdown. I've just spoken about the importance of the migration, internal migration, turn to Allah. The way to success is to turn to Allah. Don't wait, it will be too late. Turn to Allah. And remember, if you are steadfast on the path, don't become arrogant. Allah can take it away from you any moment. Don't go back on your achievements, my beloved sister, my beloved brother. Don't go back on your achievements. If Allah gave you the tawfiq and acceptance to dress appropriately, don't ever downgrade and go backwards. No, don't. Don't go backwards. No matter what people say to try and convince you to go back, don't go back. No, you've achieved something. You're risking too much. Same applies, if Allah gave you the tawfiq and the acceptance to quit a sin, be it pornography, be it alcohol, drugs, uh, whatever else it may be, adultery, anything else it may be. If Allah gave you the acceptance to quit it, don't go back. Don't go back. Allah loves you enough to hold you where you are, if you love Allah as well. And that's why I say my brothers and sisters, I, I was looking forward to visiting the Philippines, but unfortunately, that might happen at some later stage, if Allah wills. But for now, here we are connecting the pearls. So may Allah bless every one of you and grant you goodness and ease. Remember, help others as well. During these times of hardship, it's not just about you. It's about everyone. It's about your family, your community. Reach out to people. If you think you're struggling, look at those who are struggling more. If you think that you have it hard, look at those who have it even more hard. Look at the, try and help them and Allah will make things easier for you. And also, remember that Allah's given you many easy days in the past. Now He's going to test you with a few difficult days. He tests you with plus, now He tests you with minus. He tests you with addition, now a little bit of subtraction. That's Allah. Don't let it make you despondent. Learn to turn to Allah. Do a lot of dhikr, engage in dhikr. Do your salah, take your time in your salah. Do your adhkar properly in salah. Praise Allah and be kind and good to others. Speak good about others. Try to follow the beautiful teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and inshallah you'll never ever regret. I love you all my brothers and sisters for the sake and pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and until we meet again, I must say, Aqulu Qawli Hadha 
وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته